video is filled with tons of DIY, tons of inspiration. I can't wait to show you. Let's get to it. DIY here guys it is going to be with this frame it is actually on the longer side but it's thin and I found it for four dollars it was $3.99 not bad so I decided to switch it up completely I'm going to remove the back and then I started removing these staples that was holding the glass and the picture and I quickly realized I need to stop doing that because this is exactly what I'm going to need to hold the tin that i'm going to put here in just a few minutes so i decided to just fold the staples to the side and then carefully remove the glass and the picture once i had it removed i'm going to give it a quick scrub just to remove any stains or any dust that it may have had and then i am going to give it two coats of rust-oleum chalk paint and the linen white I was recently at Walmart and I found this beautiful piece of tin which was in the crafting supplies area and I thought it would be perfect for this project so I'm just going to cut it in half but first I'm going to mark three spots right down the middle and then I'm going to connect those dots so that way I know exactly where to cut and I'm going to cut it using shears that I got on Amazon. So now I am going to take some antiquing wax by Waverly and I'm just going to start dabbing it. This is a brush. It's like a hard bristle brush. I think it's meant to be for stenciling. I'm not a fan of it for stenciling, but I have used it to create rusting kind of look. So something to be to look like it was rusting for a while. So I thought it was perfect for this tin. So I'm just going to go all around the edges, but really it's no right or wrong way. You can just do whatever you want if you're going to recreate something similar to this. Then I'm going to take this. It's kind of like a terracotta color spray paint by Rust-Oleum. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just dab the brush and then just start dabbing all around where I already placed the wax. That way it's just going to a little bit of contrast because when something's rust, they have different tones. They have like browns and oranges. And I just wanted to mimic and make it look as realistic as possible. So after I was done with the rusting portion of it, I'm going to take the frame and I'm going to seal it using varathane, polyurethane in the crystal clear. And I'm just going to do one pretty good coat and let it fully dry. And now I'm going to take the same antiquing wax by Waverly and I'm just going to start applying it. I first started with a, a piece of sock, like an old sock, and then I quickly switched to the brush because it was just easier. So the goal here is to antique it a little bit, distress it a little bit, but instead of sanding it, I'm just going to use the antiquing wax. I'm going to apply it and then start wiping off. And I'm going to wipe off actually quite a bit of it. I even changed into a wet wipe. That way I can remove as much as possible because I just want the antiquing wax to be a detail within the frame. And then I made sure I went through it with a dry rag and just to remove any um, residue. So then I flipped it over and I'm just going to place the tin here very carefully, trying to keep it underneath those staples that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to place both of them one on top of each other. And then I'm going to place some tape. This tape I get at the Dollar Tree and it's just basically like a mailing shipping tape. But it actually, actually has really good stickiness to it. So I'm just going to place a couple of pieces here on the back. That way it'll be nicely secure. And then I'm going to start pressing down those staples as best as I can to keep it in place. But I also decided to add tape all around. That way it'll keep very secure as well as hide all the staples and some of that yuckiness that was on there. So now it's time to dry fit the flowers that I'm going to use for the front and I'm just going to mark in the front and then the back two spots where I'm going to drill holes and that way we can thread the wire as well as the jute twine in here in a little bit. To drill the holes I made sure that I had the piece of wood underneath as well because you don't want to um, mess up your surface. So make sure you always have a piece of scrap wood that you can drill on. So there we have it, two holes. And now I'm just going to use the florals here and just gonna place them, cut the excess stem, and then start tying them with this wire. This wire is from the Dollar Tree, but you can use any wire you have on hand. I'm gonna loop it around twice and then twist it in the back and cut the excess.
Now I'm going to make a simple bow here. It's going to be a multiple loop bow using some burlap ribbon and I'm going to tie it in the middle using some jute twine. Basically you just loop it around several times, tie it in the back and then I did do some dovetail cuts on the ends. That way it looks nicely finished. And then I'm going to thread the jute twine through the little holes and tie it in the back so it's nicely secure. And then once that was done, I thought it would just needed a little bit more umph to it. So right above the bow, I decided to add some, I have no clue what they are. I think they look like berries, these things. I got them at the Dollar Tree. They come in little, brain, little bunches. So I just cut a couple of the branches and I'm just going to thread them right through in between the bow and the rest of the stems. And I think it turned out stunning. I If you enjoy DIY home decor, this is the channel for you. I post every single week, so make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the content. For this next DIY, I am going to take this picture frame that I recently got. It was, I want to say it was like $1.99. It was a pretty good size and it's actually pretty solid. So I am going to remove the center portion of it, but we are going to keep the cardboard part of it because we're going to reuse that part. So we're going to put that to the side and then we are going to start working on the frame. You've seen me done many frames before, but of course we want to give it a clean, a good clean, even though this one was actually pretty clean. But I still like to clean it with a disinfecting wipe and then of course dry it to remove any residue. Now we're going to use Bristoleum chalk pin in the linen whites and I'm just going to use a chippy brush here and again very relaxed just start painting. I gave it two coats uh, but it wasn't perfect even after the second coat because we are going to be distressing it. So um, again I'm just going to do one coat pretty um, to give it as much coverage as possible and then the second coat lightly paint over it without over brushing again to not remove a lot of the paint. So while that is drying, I am going to take this um, crafting paper that I got at Hobby Lobby and it is beautiful. It almost has like a fabric texture and we are going to cover the center portion of the frame and I'm going to use the wood stick, wood glue stick, wait, not wood glue, glue stick. There we go. <laughs> and I am going to just uh, just apply it. Now for the second piece, I am going to try my very hardest to make sure that I align both papers, both crafting papers, and that way it's gonna look like it's one piece. So you're gonna see here how both pages now look seamless. I actually was pretty satisfied with the way both pages kind of aligned. Um, really happy with that. Now using my rotary cutter, I'm just gonna cut the excess crafting paper. That way it's gonna be nice and smooth edges. I'm not going to give that second coat to the frame. I'm just going to show you quickly here because I just want you to see how I'm just brushing, but I'm not over brushing over that second coat. Literally, I am just taking a little bit of paint, brushing and letting it be again, because I don't want to soften that paint on the first coat and then, you know, kind of like remove the paint. Once everything was dry, it's time to distress. I am using a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna focus on the edges to reveal some of that dark underneath tone. I love it when it has that dark showing through that white. And now it's time to place this center portion back on the frame and I'm gonna secure it by fastening the little clips that came with it. And then once I flip it over, I realize, you know what? It just needs a little something. So I bought, I bought this amber sand little wooden wooden piece at Walmart. It was 
I want to say like 189 and I didn't know I wasn't sure what I was going to do but I really love the way it looks on this piece so I just hot glued it to the bottom right of the piece and that finished it off look how beautiful it looks again it has that cottage feel with the blues and distressed and just love it If you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you take a second and give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up really helps my channel grow and it helps this video reach more people. For this DIY, we are going to take this picture frame I thrifted very recently for $1.99. Great deal, great quality, love it. I'm also going to take this 2x2 two two I already had on hand in my garage and I'm going to cut four pieces to fit behind the box. So I believe the, or not behind the box, behind the picture frame. The picture frame was 14 by 12 and then the pieces of wood I cut were 9 by, was it 9 by 12 I believe, yes. That way it fits behind it, um, you're not going to see it through the opening but it's also going to be hidden behind the actual frame. I'm going to secure it in place using brad nails and that's it. It's going to be very simple, it's not going to be heavy so it does not need anything stronger. Street on clouds instead of the concrete I'm dancing through Everything's about to come my way Nothing can ruin my day No matter what anyone does or say I smile at them. Once it was nicely secure We are going to paint the inside first I'm going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint And the linen white This is because once I cover the back Because it's going to be a box I won't be able to easily paint So we're going to make sure that it's painted and um, once I have the inside painted, it's then time to start adding some fairy lights. These fairy lights, I get a box of 12 on Amazon. I do have them down in my Amazon store. So if you want to check out one of some of my favorite Amazon supplies and tools, I do have the link down in the description box. So here we go, guys. So my first thought with these fairy lights was to um, staple them in place. So I'm going to leave the little on and off battery pack outside of the box and i'm going to go all around stapling until because it's pretty long these fairy lights are pretty long so it's going to go around actually twice and so my first thought was i'm going to staple it all around and it was working fine it was working fine until it wasn't <laughs> because this happened <laughs> yep it turned off on me the wire is actually pretty small, pretty thin, and I, um, when I stapled it, it cut the wire. So it cut off the electrical part of it. So then I decided to remove them all <laughs> and start again. And this time I'm going to screw in several screws in each corner. So basically one in each corner or two in each corner, one on each side. If that, if you see what I'm talking about. And that way, instead of stapling it, I can just kind of wrap it around each screw. And it is a wire, so, um, that, you know, you can just, like, tie it around and it stays pretty in place. So it worked out really well this way. And I wish I would have thought about this before, but in my mind, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll staple it. <laughs> well, I learned my lesson. Well, thankfully, the box of Fairlight brings 12, and um, I was able to have extra ones. So now we're just wrapping it around. Again, it's going to go around twice. And I'm going to make sure to leave that little box of the battery and the on off switch outside of the box. I then took 10 of these painter sticks and I removed about a half inch of the one side. I'm also going to make sure that um, when I'm putting them on that they're going to alternate like the little circle wavy area is going to alternate one up and one down that way they can all be evenly spread out. I did give them two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and let it fully dry. So now it's time to start closing the back of the box. So as you can see I'm still making sure that the little light box or the little battery box is going to be outside um, very carefully of course we don't want to mess with that wire so we're just placing them here in the back and i'm making sure that they're all like i said evenly dis, uh, evenly spread that little wavy part and make sure that they are evenly placed so that you do not see it from the front i'm going to use my stapler and i am going to just staple it which is once on each um, stick on both sides Like to be broke. I know what it's like. 
Once that now had the box nicely put together, it's time to paint the front. I'm going to give it again three coats over Stolium chalk pen in the linen white. And we'll be done, guys. I added some blue flowers that I had from the Dollar Tree. Look how cute this box is. And what I love about it is that every season you can change it. You know, you can put Christmas, you can put fall decor, just change it as the season goes. And I think in the, in the night, it's going to look beautiful when those fairy lights are on. I love, love, love how this old frame became new. And I love it. For this next DIY, I am going to take this picture frame that I thrifted actually quite a while ago. And I'm just going to start by painting the inner rim, so that darker rim portion, in a solid white. And I am using Rust-Oleum Chalk Pen in the Linen White. I am now going to take a chippy brush and I'm just going to start dabbing it into the paint and dry brushing the remaining portion of the frame. So what's remaining in the dark gray. And at first I was just going to do a few little brushes here and there, but I ended up adding more because it just felt right. It just didn't feel like it was quite finished. So I just added layer upon layer and even did it like a sideway motion and it just added a lot of texture and a lot of more coverage. I added a little bit heavier even in the corners just to add a little bit of dimensions. I just love doing that sometimes when, when I'm dry brushing or adding texture. What I'm doing here is I am blending the like the full white inner rim with the dry brushed one. It was just too much of a contrast between each other. So I'm just going to blend in where those two, um, where the solid white and the dry brush meet. I'm just blending it so it's a little softer in between one to the other. And then I decided to add a little bit more of dry brush right on the corners and the edges just to again, just adding until I saw what I liked. I have never felt home till you enter Once I had the frame where I wanted, I am now going to take this pick from Hobby Lobby, actually not Hobby Lobby, it was Walmart, and I'm going to remove some of the stem because it's a little long and thick, and then I'm going to whiten it, so just split it into two, into two sections, and one, I just decided to do the longer portion of it to the bottom of the frame, and then the ones that were a little shorter, but they're about the same, to the other side. I'm going to add a lot of hot glue here in the corner and I'm going to place the stem right there. However, I am going to use some ribbon to make sure that it's secured in place. So once I have it in place where I want it, I'm going to hot glue the ribbon to the back of the frame and I'm just going to wrap it around a few times until it is secure. And now I am just making sure that all the leaves and all the branches are where I want them. So I'm just moving them forward or sideways or whatever I see that I want to see on this on this decor. So now I'm going to take these leftover picks that I've had from other projects. They're not the same, but they do have the same color scheme. So I am going to use the little berry kind of style on the bottom portion of the frame. And the, the one with the flowers here, I am going to hot glue and place it towards the side of the frame. This is just going to add a little bit of color and I just think it just looks beautiful. And then I'm going to take this um, hydrangea. Is that a hydrangea? I think so. From Hobby Lobby and it's in the lighter tones like a beige color. I removed all the stem and I added a whole bunch of hot glue and I'm just going to hot glue it right there in the corner just to tie everything together and I think it looks stunning. This is so elegant. It is so fresh looking and I think it would be beautiful in any it's home decor.
I truly hope that this video gives you so much inspiration for those old frames that you may have at home or that you can find at the thrift store. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. If you are visiting for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it inspires you to create your own home decor. And if you are returning, welcome back. I have a playlist here and another video with tons of inspiration for you. You can click on one of them and watch more. I'll see you later. Have a blessed day. Bye.